presents Hollywood. <laughs> gentlemen. In many homes, the holiday season is a time for reading aloud from some favorite classic. And so for tonight's play, we have chosen Victor Hugo's Les Miserables, an unforgettable story of man's inhumanity to man. To star in the role of Jean Jean Valjean, we are honored to have that splendid actor, Ronald Coleman. And from the original cast of this impressive 20th century Fox picture, two wonderful stars, Deborah Paget and Robert Newton. Now... Les Miserables, starring Ronald Coleman as Jean Valjean, Deborah Paget as Cosette, and Robert Newton as Javert. I did not know Valjean during the earlier years of his life. But from what he since has told me and what I've been able to piece together, it is clear that this narrative had its start on that tragic day when he was brought into court, charged with theft. Before we proceed, will the accused explain the presence of his family in the court? Well, they're the children of a friend, monsieur. Their mother gave me shelter while I looked for work. Go on, go on. It's just when I saw them standing there looking at the loaves of bread that they were starving, monsieur. Oh, then you admit to the death? I had no money. I I took the loaf. The sentence is ten years at the oars. Ten years? Ten years? You don't understand, monsieur. No, I... Prisoner. Bring in the next case. Ten years for stealing a loaf of bread. Ten years on a prison ship. So did French justice turn a man into something half animal. The endless cruelties dulled his mind, filled it with hate and fear. But the day came when the iron collar was removed from his neck, and the chains were cut from his ankles. Well, Valjean, it appears we are rid of you. Here's your paper. Sign it. Paper? You've been released. Sign the paper. It's regulations, Valjean. Surely you've learned much of regulations. Lieutenant Javert is celebrated for his knowledge of regulations, eh, Javert? Valjean, you have been assigned to the Orion district. You are to proceed there immediately and report to police headquarters. And thereafter, report once a month. Yes, Lieutenant. Failure to do so means you will be taken and sent back for life. Give him his money, Rimbaud. Yes. Yeah. Thirty-three francs. No, no, eleven francs more. Thirty-three francs. Pay him the rest of his money. What you do on the ship is your business, Javert. But here on land, I am in charge. Pay him. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Stand to attention when you address a police officer. Now get out. As for you... Me, Lieutenant? One more offense and I'll report you to your captain. Oh, forgive me, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, and allow me to express my grief. I read in your ship's report that an old man died at the oars. The lieutenant's father, was he not? Listen to me. My father was a fool, like every other criminal. He thought the laws were made for someone else. And if, as you say, you knew of him, then you know that I was born across the street, over there in the women's prison. I was raised by the law, and I know something of it. No offense, Javert, no offense. The law is hard, but it's wise and it's just. And there can be no compromise with it. Not for my father... Not for Valjean, not for you, and not for me. Jean Valjean set out for Orléans, bearded, ragged, haunted by the nightmare of the prison ship. His meager funds were useless. He was a criminal. He could buy neither food nor lodgings. Driven from town to town, the time came when Valjean could go no farther. Please. Please, I beg you. Won't you shut the door? The rain's beating you. Let me stay a few moments, then I'll go. Warmer there by the fire, my son. Twelve leagues I've walked today. They said dogs on me. I I ask for food. They'll not give me any. I say I can pay. They turn me out. Madame McGraw. The door, yes, yes, I know. No, no, just have another place for supper, please. Well, you don't understand. I, I'm a released convict. The galleys. We should be happy if you will join us for supper, please. I can pay. I have money. No, no money. I am a priest. A priest. Oh, so you you give me food and not take my money. I'll eat in the yard. Would you prefer that? Because this is your home. It is I... church property, Monsieur. It belongs to the people. 
Our meal is but a slight one, but you will make us happy by eating it with us. Thank you. Thank you. It's still storming, Valjean. Surely you'll change your mind and stay the night. But you are a fool. Am I? I told you before, I spent ten years in the galleys for stealing. What did you steal? Bread. A loaf of bread. A loaf of bread. You give me food, a bed, and tonight when you sleep, I could... I could strangle you and be off with your treasures. Treasures, monsieur? In the room where we ate? Candlesticks, silver, heavy silver plates. Yes, they're silver. Valuable, too, no doubt. They were given to me by the sisters of the convent of the child Mary. I yes, saw that the woman hid them, and I am a thief. Here, read this. The yellow paper. Released convict. Dangerous man. It was only fear that made them do it, Valjean. But do not forget that even in the most evil of men, there is some good. Look for it, my son, and you'll find it. Sleep well, Valjean. God bless you. In the morning, Jean Valjean was gone, and gone too with the bishop's silver plates. It was the housekeeper who discovered the loss. I warned you. Oh, that unspeakable creature. That's a wonder who will die. And you stand here and tell I me that... I stand here, madame, to tell you that someone's at the door. <laughs> now, please try to calm yourself. Come in. <laughs> the police and, and him. Uh, good morning, Your Eminence, uh, madame. There's something wrong, Copper. Uh, this uh, man, he had these hidden in his rags, Your Eminence. Your silver plates, I recognize them anywhere. Oh, praise him. Count them, count them at once. Madame, please. Monsieur Valjean, you are a stupid man. You took the plates when I told you those candlesticks would bring far more money. You won't go far if you're that forgetful. You can be sure he won't go anywhere. But I gave them to him, didn't he tell you? But your eminence, obviously... I am a bishop of the church. Do you doubt me? You gave him these plates? I most certainly did. And now you have our permission to withdraw. Uh, forgive me. I... I didn't know. You're letting me go? And this time, take the plates and the candlesticks. Use them wisely, Valjean, so that you may never have to go to the galleys again. I... I... No, no. I should thank you. It is the giver, my son, who receives the benefit of the gift. It is he whose soul is gratified because he's done something generous that sets him above his fellow men. Do you understand that? I... I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, Vergeon, I would like you to pray with me. I'm not a religious man. Few of us are. Come, my son. We will try. When he left the bishop's house, Jean Valjean, for the first time in ten years, looked and felt like a human being. His rags and his beard were gone. And he set out again on the road to Orléans. Two days later, he reached the town of Morvan. And there he went to the shop of a silversmith. You are right, monsieur. These are very fine plates. I can offer you 420 francs. Satisfactory? Yes, satisfactory. And now the candlesticks, if I may weigh them, monsieur? No, no. No, I have changed my mind. I've decided not to sell the candlesticks. Oh, but I'm sure I can give you even more than... A oh, horse a runaway and a child in the carriage. Stay out of the street, monsieur. Stay when you down. Monsieur. Valjean stopped the runaway, and the child was unharmed. Valjean returned to the shop of the silversmith, and there he was followed by an elderly gentleman whose gratitude was boundless. Monsieur, you saved his life, throwing yourself at those horses. That was my grandson, monsieur. You can thank me by leaving me alone and by telling those people out there to, to, to go about their business. You must allow me to do something in return. No, no, I, I have business with this shopkeeper. And then I must leave. I have to be in Orléans tomorrow and already... Orléans? I'm... But I'm returning there myself within the hour. You are from Orléans, monsieur? Oh, I was on my way there to... To look for work. Then I could ask for nothing better. I am not without influence there. You uh, you have a trade, monsieur? A trade? Uh, monsieur, I... What if I... you're looking for work? Oh, monsieur Montu owns a factory here, the pottery factory. Well, as a matter of fact, I came here to arrange its sale. It's nothing to the one I own in Orléans. 
Perhaps pottery would interest you. Come, I'll show you through this little place. There's the money for the place, monsieur. I will get it for you. Uh, the money, yes. If I were not a loyal citizen of Orion, I would stay away. It is a vile and dirty place, monsieur. A town like this would suit you far better. Still, I must go to Orion. Well, I'll show you my shop here. You can look around while I settle some matters in the office. Your money, monsieur. Uh, you have not changed your mind about the candlestick. No. No, they are not for sale. Come, monsieur. Come. I was foreman of the factory. I was both puzzled and annoyed with the stranger who came in and asked so many questions and disturbed the workers. You, uh, you wish something, monsieur? No, only to look. Hmm. Then perhaps you're interested in buying. No. But you've formed an opinion of our little factory. This product is poor. Ah, ah, well, now that you've expressed an opinion, perhaps you'll go on your way. Let go of my arm, monsieur. When you're outside, gladly. Now. Either you come peacefully or I... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Ah, I say you do have a good right hand, monsieur. Stronger than yours. Yeah, I, I believe you. Tell me something. These, these pieces, the, the men are making. Why is it that one piece is thick and another thin? And one is well glazed and another not? Hmm? It is always so. The product has always been this bad? Well, it always could be better, monsieur. So why not let each man do what he's best at? The best potter turns, the best glazier glaze. No, no, no. Our artisans have always been... Well, oh. <laughs> perhaps you're right. Now, if you were a man of means, I'd suggest that you buy this place and try your ideas. Monsieur, if we're to reach Orion tonight, we must start. Monsieur, uh, not long ago you advised me to remain in this little town. But you said you were you going to... You also said you wanted to help me. Perhaps you can. Well, believe me, I should like nothing better then, as a, a business matter I should like to discuss with you. Montu sold the little pottery factory for next to nothing. Sold it to the stranger who said his name was Madeline. Some weeks later, far away in Marseille, Lieutenant Javert received a letter from the police of Orléans. The criminal, Jean Valjean, had disappeared. <laughs> Continue with Act Two of Les Miserables in a few moments. Right now, Libby Collins with the Lux Movie News. All the excitement of Paris nightlife in the time of the famous portrait painter Toulouse Lautrec comes to us in this picture, Ken. It's United Artists' Technicolor film, Moulin Rouge. It was filmed right in Paris, wasn't it, Libby? Yes, with Jose Ferrer portraying the artist and the new French star, Colette Marchand, as the model he loves. And adding plenty of spice, there's Zsa Zsa Gabor, leading a chorus of dancers in a can-can routine. Oh, that should be a sensational number. Well, I'll wait until you see it. The girls in the traditional fluffy petticoats and black stockings, and Zsa Zsa Gabor in that red and white costume of the Trek poster. Producer John Houston captures the spirit of the left bank in Moulin Rouge. Lovely Zsa Zsa Gabor and lovely Colette Marchand. Oh, that's the way to say glamour in French. And how? Now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Les Miserables, starring Ronald Coleman as Jean Valjean, Deborah Padgett as Cosette, and Robert Newton as Javert. Six years went by since Lieutenant Javert had ordered Valjean to Orléans, there to report to the police. But Valjean remained in the little town of Morvan. Here, under the name of Monsieur Madeleine, he has prospered greatly as the owner of the pottery works. And... I do, as is it. Stop worrying, Robert. Financially, we're in excellent condition, so forget about the accounts over to you. Now, what else? Uh, your signature. The regular monthly draft to the convent of the child Mary. Oh, yes, of course. Every month for six years. Why? <laughs> Someday I may tell you. Now, uh, what's this? Very official-looking paper? Well, the, the town council wants you to sign it. A, a petition to incorporate it as a city. A city, eh? <laughs> Coming up in the world. Yeah, so it would seem. Well? Why, it's ridiculous. Have you read this? No, I, I uh, helped to write it. But it says they want to make me mayor. It's impossible. Oh? Why? Well, because I can't accept. Because I'm... I'm me, of all people. 
because of what you've done for us. There aren't 50 people in this town who, who don't depend on this factory one way or another for their existence. Why, six years ago, this town was a mud hole. Six years. What do they know about me before that? Mm-hmm. What difference does it make? They know who you are now. Makes a difference to me. Well, it doesn't to me. How do you know what I was before? Why should I care? I'll show you why. <laughs> this is uh, something I've never shown anyone before. A yellow paper, Robert. You don't have to show it to me. You you knew about this? Do you remember when you first came to the factory? I didn't want you around, did I? I saw the mark of the iron collar still on your neck. You've known all these years. Yes, I've known and I've forgotten. Yes, but don't you see what this says? All they are. I never reported. Any day, any night, they can take me and send me back for life. Which they haven't done. And who'd recognize you as the man who came here six years ago? I wouldn't even recognize you myself. Now, what about the petition? I don't know. Tell the tell the council that I that I'll consider it. Some weeks later, Monsieur Madeleine became our mayor. We were now a city, and new officials were sent to us by the central government. Among them, an inspector of police. His name, Javert. My papers, Monsieur Madeleine. Thank you. You do not wish to examine them, Monsieur? Oh, I'm sure they are in perfect order, Inspector Javert. I come from Marseille, Monsieur. <clears throat> I've been in police work there for many years. It is my life. I have pride in little else except in being a good officer. I'm afraid you'll find your assignment here most tedious, Inspector. We're a quiet little place. I've heard this, Monsieur. Yet there is crime everywhere. And poverty, if one looks hard enough. I am sworn only to uphold the laws of France. I merely suggest that you do not look for evil where none exists. If I did that, monsieur, I should be guilty of personal immorality and I would resign. Then we understand each other. I trust we shall work well together. I will bother you as little as possible. Thank you, monsieur. No, Javert had not recognized him. Valjean had passed his most trying test. The months went by, and Javert, the model of efficiency, pursued his dull existence without complaint. And then one night, he arrested a woman. He took her to his office. Monsieur, I swear to you, I was not to blame. You must believe me. You were arguing with a man. You stuck him. I lost my temper. I'll ask his pardon. He knows I meant no harm. Oh, monsieur, please. I'm ill. I have lung fever. You can see that I'm ill. They will care for you in prison. No, please. Please, I... I have a child. So? She's kept for me at Bourges, but, but I must pay for her. If I don't pay, they'll throw her on the street. If I don't pay, she'll starve. You, Sergeant, take her away. No, 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 you can't, you can't. Inspector, please. Monsieur le maire, my office is honored. I don't wish to interfere, Inspector, but this woman should not have been arrested. You've been misinformed, monsieur. She disturbed the peace. She violated the curfew law. And what do you plan to do with her? She will serve six months, monsieur. Six months? Inspector, the woman's obviously ill. Then I'll see that she's sent to the prison hospital. No, she will not go to prison. The man was drunk. I saw what happened. Had she been home where she belonged, the incident would not have occurred. This is a matter of law, monsieur. It is a matter of justice. They are one and the same, are they not? No, not always. I'm asking you to release the woman. As you wish, monsieur. Come, madame. I... I will not go to prison. No. I'll see that you're cared for. And if you tell me where your child is, I'll try to bring her to you. Bring her? Tell me. As quickly as I can. Good night, Inspector. Good night, Monsieur Le Maire. He drove the woman to a hospital and left at once for Bourges. The child, Rosette, was in her early teens. And then there was a heartbreaking reunion. The mother hadn't seen her for years. Now she was dying. There was a caller at the hospital. Inspector Javert. The air in the corridor, monsieur. I felt it my duty to advise you that I have been ordered to Arras. Not permanently? No, just for a few days. A case of theft. A man was caught stealing apples. A very serious crime. There was a question of identity, monsieur. The police believe the prisoner was once in my charge in the galleys. If he is the same man, then he's also a parole violator. And... 
And you are to establish his identity? A trusty has recognized him as a man who once pulled an oar beside him. A thief named Jean Valjean. Can you... you think the prisoner is... is this man? I don't know, monsieur. But uh, we've been looking for Valjean for almost seven years. You think you could recognize him after all this time? Hmm. Names and faces are my profession. If it's the man, I, I'll know him. Yes, I, I won't detain you any longer, Inspector. Thank you. I'll report as soon as I return. <laughs> night, Jean Valjean, also a journey to Arras. When the trial opened, he sat unnoticed in back of the courtroom. The prisoner was demented, a wretched vagabond who seemed almost to enjoy his sudden importance. I will ask you once again, tell the court who you are. But uh, I have told you, I am Jean Mathieu. I eat apples. <laughs> you still deny that you are Jean Valjean? That you served ten years in the galleys? Prisoner will answer the questions. Are you Jean Valjean? No, no. Jean Mathieu. Why do they call me Jean Valjean when I am Jean Mathieu? Monsieur, I should like to call Inspector Javert to the stand. Granted. Monsieur le Président. I am Javert. But I request that my testimony be delayed until the other witnesses have re-examined the accused. This man may spend the rest of his life in the galleys. And as a police officer, I feel I might influence the viewpoint of these other witnesses. I commend you, Inspector. Excuse? Then may I recall the prison trustee, Jacques Brevet? Stand up, Brevet. We'll examine the accused again. I will, but I waste your time. He is Jean Valjean who sat beside me in the galley. And the other convicts? Jean Flew and Chastel. Stand up! I knew him well. His name is Jean Valjean. This one I would know in the dark. Valjean. <laughs> no one believes me. <laughs> no one. <laughs> it is a game. Mr. <laughs> Court, please. By what right do you interrupt? Who are you? Inspector Javert will tell you who I am. Well, forgive me if I'm startled, monsieur. That man is the mayor of Mova. Monsieur Madley. The mayor of Mova? Monsieur, I must again ask why you interrupt. Because the court must release the accused. He has told the truth. I am Jean Valjean. Yeah. And these men. Uh, Brevet, Jean Flou, Cochepaille. Look at me, look at me. He is crazy. He is not Valjean. Ask Jean Flou to bear his right shoulder. There's a burn on the shoulder when he tried to efface his number. And you, Brevet, you used to wear a gold earring. It's no longer there, but the ear is still pierced. And you, Cochepaille, this poor wretch here could join you in the galleys for life. He's already an idiot. What difference would it make? He's a human being and he's innocent. Tell the cop who I am. If this is what you want, then you are Jean Valjean. All right? Monsieur, I think no further proof is needed. As there is no warrant for me, I shall return to Morva. I look at the disposition of the court at my home. Monsieur le Président, this is fantastic. I demand that Monsieur Madden be examined as to his sanity. There is no need. I am not insane. The galleys make the convict, Monsieur... And the name and the position of Monsieur Madeleine had their beginnings in thievery. The theft of some silver from an old man. I cannot rail against fate. When I think what I might have done to this poor wretch, I know that I'm to be envied rather than pitied. Does the court excuse me, monsieur? You will hear next from Inspector Javert at your home. Please see that you are there. Yes, yes. <laughs> This was the terrible news that Valjean brought me the night he returned. And I, too, had news for him. Cosette's mother was dead. I've no time, Robert. I can't even say goodbye to Cosette. If I know Javert, he'll be here any moment. Well, where will you go? To England, if I'm lucky. Now, listen carefully. I've placed everything in your name. Dispose of the factory and make your way to England. If I can, I'll contact you in London through our agents there. And Cosette? Tell her the truth about me. And why I couldn't see her. But England. Shall I take her with me? No. No, take her to Paris. The convent of the child Mary. The sisters will care for her for the sake of Monsieur Madeleine. Tell her... Tell her I'll always be close to her. Goodbye, Robert. He'd been gone less than an hour when Javert came into the house. Behind him, half a dozen soldiers. Here we are. 
Set him in room. You've come too late, Inspector. Perhaps, Monsieur. He's gone. But the police, it is never too late. If he's escaped us tonight, then what of tomorrow? Or next week? Or next year? You will find, Monsieur, that the Lord is armed with an infallible weapon. Wish. And there is no escape. We'll continue with Act Three of Les Miserables, but first our guest tonight, Melinda Markey, daughter of the famous producer. I hear, Melinda, you're rehearsing a play opening in Hollywood. I am, Mr. Cummings, but the big news is an opening here this week on Christmas Day. 20th Century Fox is my cousin Rachel. That's the picture based on Daphne du Maurier's bestseller. Yes, and it stars Olivia de Havilland back after two years on the stage. Featured with her is Richard Burton in his first American picture. What a dramatic role Rachel offers for Miss de Havilland's talent. Burton accuses her of poisoning his foster father, her first husband. Yes, and he vows revenge, but instead becomes fatally infatuated. As my cousin Rachel, Mr. Havland makes the plot very believable. She's absolutely fascinating. I compliment Mr. Havland's talent and her beauty. She's one of Hollywood's loveliest stars. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBS... on Act Three of Les Miserables, starring Ronald Coleman as Jean Valjean, Deborah Paget as Cosette, and Robert Newton as Javert. There wasn't a move now that Valjean could make, but that the shadow of Inspector Javert lay across his path. And someday, the shadow would become the man. For more than a year, however, Valjean remained safely in England. And then, on one of my trips to London, he told me his plans. So, I'm going back, Robert. I'm going back to France. Well, it's useless for me to warn you again. Actually, there's not too much to worry about. Cosette has helped make the arrangement. Cosette? Yes, I'm going to the convent. She's found work there for me. The old gardener has died. Well, I'll be the new gardener. The work will do me good, and I'll be near the child. She's all I have, Robert. Once you're back in France... Javert. Uh, first, he must find me. And the convent walls are high and thick. God be with you, Jean. For three years, he labored at the convent, caring for Cosette, giving her the love she had so seldom known. Cosette filled a great void in his life, and for the first time, I think, Valjean was truly happy. When Cosette's education was completed... I made arrangements to lease a house for them in Paris. Cosette was delighted. And for a few months, everything went well. Oh, how can I ever thank you, Father? I, I've never been so happy or oh, so spoiled in all my life. Well, I I knew you'd like Paris, Cosette. Oh, but look at the expense, this house and the servants. Oh, we can thank Robert for much of this. He's made wise investments. No, dear, we have nothing to worry about. If that were only so, nothing to worry about. Well, the police have more important things to concern them these days. There's going to be trouble, Cosette. Soon, I'm afraid. The revolutionaries, yes, I, I know. They're plotting to overthrow the king. And that's why you do well, my dear, not to see that young man again. But, but Father Marius is studying law at the university. The side, he's a royalist, a bad. Oh, his title means nothing to him. He told me so himself. Oh? And, and what else did he tell you, Father? He's a revolutionary. He's one of the organizers, Cosette. But if he's so open and honest with you, how can you dislike him so? Oh, I didn't say I dislike him. He means nothing to me one way or another. As for his honesty, it's true he's admitted he's a revolutionary. I met him in a cafe last week. I, I've had to learn to sense things, Cosette. Perhaps I'm too suspecting, but in his case, I was right. When I faced him with it, he told me. And you don't want me to see him again? You... you like him so much? Yes. Then I leave the decision up to you. There's only one thing I ask. Marius must never come here. He must never know where you live. Don't worry, Father. He'll never know until you give me permission to tell him. Yes, Cosette was in love. She'd been meeting Marius in the Bois, the park, 
And in spite of his determination to declare himself to her guardian, Cosette still refused to tell Marius where she lived. One afternoon, when I came to the house, Valjean was greatly agitated. Our business problems will have to wait, Robert. You remember last week, the stranger I noticed across the street? Well? He was there again today, pretending to admire the garden. You're certain he's from the police? Well, of course I'm certain. I can smell them. Somehow they found out that Cosette knows Marius. And the boy's a known revolutionary. Well, but after all, if they do arrest him... Arrest that's him? Not... <laughs> I wish they would. But they won't. They'll watch him. And sooner or later, he'll lead them here. Quietly, Jean. It's Cosette. Well, was it pleasant in the park? Oh, yes, Father. Well, it's, it's brought color to your cheeks. Father, no bad. There's something I must speak to you about. Oh, that's strange. I was about to say the same thing to you. Cosette, I... I find I must go back to England again. But, but why? It's no longer safe for me to stay here. Oh, that was so long ago. They, they can't still persecute you. I'm a parole violator. As long as I remain in France, they can return me to the galleys. It's true, Cosette. Then, then we must leave immediately. No. No, my dear. Much as I desire it, I can't ask you to go with me. I'm going with you, Father. But you have friends here, Cosette, and time. I have no friends and no time. Are you sure? Quite sure, Father. Wait a minute. Look outside there. The window. Why? Cosette. You didn't tell him? Oh, no, no. Well, if he's here, you'd better ask him in. Wait in the hall. I'll be there in a moment. You shouldn't. You shouldn't have come here, Marius. I asked you not to. You promised me. I followed you, Cosette. I had to. Good day, monsieur. Did Cosette invite you here? On the contrary, Cosette has always refused and to allow... And you've chosen to ignore her wishes. Why? Because for the past month I've been meeting Cosette in the park without your knowledge. This seems to me both dishonorable and unfair to you. And now you want my permission to make a formal call? Why, yes. And I see no reason to object, but Cosette is leaving Paris. I'm going to England, Mario. England? No. No, you won't. I won't allow it. Mario. I think we can consider this little affair closed, monsieur. I assure you this is no little affair. I've come to ask for Cosette's hand in marriage. Marriage? But she's a child. Do you think I'd even consider... She's not a child. Mario's father, please. I'd, I'd like to speak with Mario's father. Do you mind? I'll be in the study. Oh, I beg you not to come. Why? Well, you could go to England without any unpleasant explanation. You know that's not true. I would have told you, but... There are things you just don't understand. What difference does it make? I love you. You love me. You can't deny it. I never said that. No, not in words, perhaps, but... Cosette, he's dragging you to England just to keep you away from me. No, that's not the reason, Mario. See, he's cared for me since I was a child. I, I'm all he has. That's ridiculous. Does he think he can hold on to you forever? All I ask is, is that you wait just for a little while. I, I can talk to him, Mario. You can come to England. Oh, Cosette, this is child's talk. My place is here, and I want you with me. But you must make the decision. Here. Now. The decision is not mine, Mario. It is yours. Very well. A pleasant voyage, Cosette. And I've just one other thing to say to him. Monsieur! Well? She's going with you. But I warn you, there'll be other men who'll love her, and if you persist in running away with her, you'll do her a terrible harm. I'm grateful for your advice. However, as I said, Cosette is still a child. There is yet... Cosette is a woman. She's beautiful. She's desirable. And you're in love with her. You want her for yourself. You won't face that, will you? But it's true. You know it. Get out. Be careful of your next rival, monsieur. You may not dispose of him so easily. Yeah. You heard what he said? It doesn't matter. The man across the street. He's returned. Make arrangements at once, Robert. We'll leave as soon as we can. When Marius left, he was followed by the man across the street. I watched until they disappeared, not knowing, of course, that an hour later, the man would be reported to his superior, Inspector Javert. Never mind the details, Dupuis. Just the pertinent facts. I followed the subject to number 34 Rue Brusac. He only there for a short time and returned to the Place Marengo. The Place Marengo is barricaded by the rebels? Yes, monsieur. 
And he was passed through the barricades. Through Brissac. Who lives at the house? The girl, her father, and another man. I suggest they be taken in at once for questioning. There is no lady. Monsieur? The king at last has seen fit to act. The militia has been ordered out against the barricades. After tonight, there will be no more revolution and no more revolutionaries. Do I keep watch on the house? No. The militia will attack dust tonight. Our task now is to see that any who escape from the barricades are tracked down and brought to justice. I'll need you and all your available men. Our plans were set. We'd leave Paris in the morning, thence to the Hav, and across the Channel. But late that night, there was a knock at the back door. No one was there. But on the floor was a note. Give it to her, Cosette. Give it to her, Robert. She's upstairs in her room. Jean, look what it says on the envelope. Provisional government. Saint-Denis barricades. It's from Marius. Give it to Cosette. I've already opened it, Jean. I, uh, I want you to read it. Here. The revolution has started... While I still have time, I must beg of you not to sacrifice your life to this man's selfishness. He holds you only by your exaggerated sense of gratitude. I cannot deny my heart. If I live, I will follow wherever he takes you. Keep the note, Robert. Give it to Cosette in the morning. Why don't you give it to her? Because I may not be back by morning. I'm going out. <laughs> A stranger. He says he must see you. Send him over here. Keep your hands up, citizen. Start walking. Oh, it's you. Yes. Well, monsieur. I intercepted your letter to Cosette. You risked your life coming here just to tell me that? I came here to tell you that you're right and you're wrong. I love Cosette, it's true, but not as you seem to think. And I love her too much to stand in the way of her happiness. I'm sorry, I, I said things in anger. That doesn't matter. You're, you're free to go to her whenever you wish. You're a little late, monsieur. The militia is broken through. My morning will be surrounded. Exactly. If you stay here, you'll be destroyed. Perhaps. If what Paris does tonight, France does tomorrow. So I stay. Now leave while you can. The guard of the Marius. Come quickly. The wine shop. Prisoner. You came into the wine shop, did you? I did. And across the courtyard. Well, you can leave the same way while I attend to the prisoner. Now hurry. Here he is, Marius. He refuses to talk. I will talk now. You are Baron Pomerci. I am citizen Pomerci. And I'm Inspector Javert of the police. I was in pursuit of a criminal when your men captured me. The man is a parole violator. You're wasting my time. Tie his hands, Gustave. Get back to your post. Wait. This has nothing to do with your revolt. I demand you allow me to do my duty and arrest him. He can't be far off. Well, sir, then you'll think, Inspector. Sure. Is, is this why you're going to England? This is an old score between him and me, Marius. Will you let me settle it? Yes. Yeah. Take my pistol. You can get out to the cellar. They're charging the barricades. I'm right here. Get me a boat. They're charging. We can stop here, Javert. We're quite alone now. My duty is complete. I found you and I arrested you. So have your revenge. Now stand still. I have a knife in my pocket. Yes. The knife suits you better than the pistol, Belgian. But the knife is to cut your ropes. Now you're free, Javert. Kill me. Kill me now. You think you can bargain my life for your freedom. There is no bargain. I give you your life. Don't you know that as long as you live, I'll hunt you? You're a convict. A criminal. You're sick, Javert. Your mind is sick. Now go while there's still a chance. You want me to grovel and thank you. You want me to see the nobility of your soul. I spit on your nobility. You're a criminal and I'm taking you in. Now shoot. Shoot! Inspector Javert. Monsieur, you're bleeding. I'm all right, you see. But the man you went after, the convict, escaped? Look at me. I'm a strong man. I had him in these two hands. But the oars, they give them the strength of animals. Huh. Yes, he got away. Fighting is almost over, monsieur. Most of the revolutionaries have been taken prisoner. There is one prisoner I want to see. Baron Pomet. He was badly wounded. He's a friend of the convict, Valjean. I want to see him. Well, unfortunately, Monsieur, Pontmercy has disappeared. How can a wounded man disappear? The barricades were surrounded. He was unconscious. We left him where he fell. And when we returned, he was gone. There's only one way he could have disappeared. Through the sewers. But I tell you, he could not possibly have walked. 
Then he was carried. And I think I know who carried him. The convict? Wait, Inspector. I'll bring some men. No, no one. I'll find him myself. Alone. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Then take heart. We'll be out of this soon. I'll bring you to my house. Put me down, I beg you. Alone you could escape, but with me you... The militia won't look for you. Yeah, it's most likely a place. So they'll suspect you the least. Yeah. Get her. Help her! Help her! Don't, don't worry. He's far behind us. I don't know where. Help her! I won't let you do this. You can't carry me and get away. Be silent. There's a way up to the street just, a, just ahead of us. You can't escape, Help her! Officer of the law doing his duty. It makes no difference what I think or feel or want. It has nothing to do with me. Nothing. An old man once told me there was good in even the most despicable of men. Through the years I found this to be true. But you, you're not a man, are you, Javert? Take him in the house. Take him in the house. I had heard them coming. And I waited for Javert behind the door. Put up your hand, Javert. No, no, Robert, no, no, let him go. I gave him my word. Now, find the housekeeper and send her for a doctor, quickly. She's just inside. She's been helping us pack. We, we could leave now. Everything is ready. Tell, tell her to bring a doctor. I'll take Marius into the study. Marius, quickly. Run and fetch a doctor. Father, what is it? It's Marius, Cosette. He's been hurt. Marius. We'll need your help. Stay with him, Cosette. Javert, he could escape, you know. There are windows in the study, but he's given his word, hasn't he? He's still. The word of a convict given to you, the law. He'll go back with you. Back to the galleys for life. How does success taste after all these years, Inspector? Wait for the doctor, Cosette. We mustn't touch him. But, but that man in there. His name is Javert, Inspector Javert. You're going with him. I thought the law know you can. Oh, I must. I'm leaving you with Marius. He loves you even more than I do. Jean. Take care of her, Robert. I can do no more. Jean. He's gone. Gone? Javert is gone. Gone! Javert! Javert! He looked at me, stunned, bewildered, and then turned and rushed from the house. Far down the street, the dim shadow of Javert was moving toward the river. Javert! Jean called to him, but Javert didn't pause. Javert! Javert had reached the bridge. He walked to the middle, mechanically, like a man in a dream. And he climbed the rail and plunged to his death. They're in England now. Jean, Cosette, and Marius. Someday I think they'll return to France. And when they do, with them will come some silver candlesticks, and Jean will again light the candles and repeat the words of the old man who once helped him. It is the giver who receives the benefit of the gift. It is he whose soul is gratified because he has done something that sets him above his fellow men. What a Christmas present they've given us. Ronald Coleman, Deborah Paget, and Robert Newton. <laughs> Isn't this the first time you've played the part of Jean Valjean, uh, Ronnie? Uh, yes, Erling, and I believe it's the first time you've seen it. Well, now, how could that happen, Mr. Cummings? Well, it's been made five times. Well, Deborah, Mrs. Cummings and I went to see the first version. It starred my old friend, William Farnham. 
and right in the middle of the picture, Irving Cummings Jr. announced his arrival. Mm. <laughs> no wonder you Americans are so successful. You 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 double <laughs> up on everything. Oh yes. <laughs> For instance, we combine soap and water and Presto, a Lux facial. Of course, it has to be Lux toilet soap. It's such a wonderful complexion. Yes, you you must learn more of our customs, Bobby. You English are much too slow. And look who's talking. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to Christmas. But uh, don't tell me you combine it with uh, with the new year. Oh, no, no. No, the holidays here are much the same as in England. We sing carols. Too bad we can't sing a few now. Oh, that. Stars and stripes forever. <laughs> Stars and stripes forever for Christmas. Oh, no, I was only fooling. But some holidays do have parades, and parades mean marches, and marches mean stars and stripes forever. And besides, it's my latest picture opening here December 31st, and it stars Kristen Webb in the part of John Philip Sousa. What won't Mr. Belvedere think of next? Now he's invented music. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, do you have a holiday treat for uh, next Monday night, sir? Uh, that we do. It's an inspiring picture, Bobby. That really does show the American way of life. It tells the story of our heroic pioneers and the trails they blazed for us. And that could be none other than the Metro Golden Mayor's outstanding production of Westwood the Woman. And as our stars from the original superb cast, we will present Robert Taylor and Denise Darcel. And a fine picture it was, too. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>